During the purge, all crime is legal, so this isn't even a question, right? You should definitely be able to steal stuff. The answer isn't that simple. If you purge someone during the purge, the whole act is concluded before the purge ends. But the purge season two shows us that if you're still on private property after the conclusion of the last siren, they can book you for trespassing. So what if you steal something? Are you required to drop it before the end of the final siren? Is it considered possession of stolen property the moment that 12 hours of the purge have elapsed? If you're watching this on the day of upload, happy purge to each and every one of you. My initial plan for today's festivities was to upload my Things You Missed episode on the Purge TV series. However, that's gonna take a little bit longer, but I couldn't leave you with no Purge video on Purge Night. So, before you head out there and do your own purging, it's best to know and understand the rules. I've been seeing this question a lot in my comments lately. If you steal something during the Purge, do you get to keep it? The answer is sometimes. To answer this question, let's look back at the things that have been stolen during the purge. In the original movie, Mrs. Sandin hangs on to the polite stranger's rifle after he's purged, but Dante Bishop gives back the gun that he acquired from the Sandins, though this could just be because the family had already lost so much and he wasn't going to take anything else. In Anarchy, Leo, Callie, and Eva steal weapons and a vehicle from the woman who hosted the purge gala. Leo leaves the girls in the car while he goes to take care of business, but he's critically injured just before the purge ends. Before the sirens sound, Eva and Callie get out of the car to go aid him but they hang on to the guns. It's safe to say at this point that the stolen guns can be kept, but when they're trying to get Leo to the hospital, they don't seem to consider using the stolen car they were just in. Uh, you got a car? Uh, you got a car? Uh, yes. Go get it now! So they use this guy's car to get Leo to the hospital. It seems like cars cannot be kept if stolen during the purge. We don't see anything else get stolen during Anarchy, but we can learn more from this line. So quiet here. This district's always quiet on purge night. The banks move their monies. No one's ever down here. The fact that the banks move their money suggests that there is an incentive for someone to try to rob the bank, which does happen in a later installment. We'll get to that. Next is election year. The main story ends just after midnight, so we never actually see the end of that purge. However, there is an item that is attempted to be stolen. And I want my candy bar. And I'm gonna take it. Yeah, Kimmy tries to steal a candy bar. I think we can all agree it's no surprise that this would be allowed, especially if you eat it before the purge ends. Marcos comes back at the conclusion and finds the whole deli ransacked, so it seems likely that any food items are fair game to keep after the purge, regardless of if they're eaten. Another note to make about election year. It takes place in the future, and Dante is still easily able to hotwire a car, which he only uses for a moment before his death. But my takeaway from this is that it's not difficult to steal a car, so the fact that the purge hasn't become a free-for-all for every parked car on the street must mean that you can't keep a vehicle if you you steal one. The fourth movie is the prequel, The First Purge. This time, we actually get to see a couple robberies take place. One man attempts to pry open an ATM machine. If you're not allowed to keep the money that you steal during the purge, he has no reason to be out there risking his life. We also see a group of thieves target a cash for gold store. I'm exercising my right to purge by taking all your merch, and if you stand in my way, I will f you up. Let's f purge, y'all. This place has jewelry, guns, gold, and silver. They're stealing more valuable items, which tells me that what can and cannot be kept isn't so much related to the price tag. So far, it seems like cars cannot be kept post-purge, but any items small enough to hold in your hand are fair game, including money. What about larger sums of money, or larger objects? While the purge season one doesn't have much thieving going on, season two introduces us to a band of bank robbers. What happens is interesting. Three of them make it out of the bank before the purge ends, and they get to keep their money. But Tommy gets caught with his foot on the line as time expires, and they book him for armed robbery. However, they later find out that the amount that they stole wasn't actually that much, because the banks are keeping most of their money in an airplane throughout the entire duration of the purge. So next purge, they come up with a plan to prevent the plane from taking off and take in a haul upward of $100 million, proving that the value of products stolen is not a factor. The money is kept in these huge rolling cases, which they unload from an armored truck onto their boat. This has me convinced that the size of an item isn't necessarily relevant here either. Their plan was always to stop the plane from taking off. They never seem to consider hijacking the plane. Maybe there are practical reasons that they couldn't do that, but the fact stands that the idea of trying to stow away in one of these cases and take control of the plane is never even brought up, which leads me to believe that planes are also off limits. But there is perhaps an even more important detail that I noticed in season two that answers another previously unknown question. What about houses? Can you take over someone's house or business, purge the inhabitants, and claim it as your own property? Season two's storyline revolves around the death of a character named Drew Adams. Her friend Esme stops by her house after she's gone and encounters two realtors. I'm so sorry, uh, we're just doing a first inspection. Did you want to look around? 
Why are you thinking of buying? The owner was just purged and uh, we think it's gonna go very fast. It would appear that if a person is purged, their home can't be claimed. Instead, it just goes on the market. This is kind of a dark detail. The NFFA can just purge people and turn a huge profit on their house. So you can't keep real estate or vehicles. If you steal a car, have fun on your joyride, but you better be out of it by 7 a.m. Same goes for real estate. But you can keep other items or money, no matter how big, no matter how valuable. So what is the logic behind these rules? I think I have the answer. All crime is legal during the purge. You cannot go back and try to arrest someone after the purge for a crime that was committed during the purge. However, if that crime is still happening when the purge concludes, it's considered an off-purge crime. That's why Tommy is arrested for being at the bank. If I steal $5 from you, it's my money now, as long as I steal it during the purge. Money, weapons, jewelry, food, and other common items are transferred by hand-to-hand -hand exchange. For example, if you give someone a cookie, it's assumed that you're giving them ownership. Even if it's agreed that they're just borrowing the cookie, it's ultimately going to be on them to return it. You voluntarily gave the cookie to them, so no crime was committed even if they don't give it back. However, that's not how you transfer vehicles or real estate. If I wanted to transfer ownership of my car to you, which I don't, what do I look like, David Dobrik? I'd have to fill out a title certificate, sign it, and go to the local DMV to officially transfer the ownership. The DMV is not open during the purge, so transferring ownership is impossible. Meaning that when I wake up on March 22nd, the car still belongs to me no matter what happened in the last 12 hours. Even if the car title is stolen, the DMV has a duplicate, which they can still give a copy of to the legal owner. For yeah, a small fee. There is a similar process for transferring real estate. Once again, you have a title as proof of your legal ownership. You need to get a real estate attorney who will prepare the deed, the legal document that transfers ownership of the property. You'll need to sign the deed in front of a notary, a public officer who is not available on purge night. These processes also apply to aircrafts, boats, trailers, businesses, and probably submarines. I mean, I didn't look it up, but I'm guessing submarines. So the purge isn't useful for stealing these kind of items. Now you may be wondering, okay, what if I just use the purge to steal a car? Car, hide it in the garage, and then sell it off the record for cash or for parts. Sure, you'd be committing a crime, but because there are no emergency services during the purge, there's a good chance you'd get away with it. Well, that's not so easy either. The purge takes place in the future, and we already have modern vehicles that are practically impossible to steal with two-factor authentication. However, based on how easily Dante hacks into the car in election year, let's just assume that criminals have evolved as fast as auto security. Even then, you're not going to get very far. Dante drove the car all of 20 feet before getting purged. With GPS tracking, stolen cars are becoming a thing of the past. Even if you're an experienced hacker and manage to disable this, good luck relocating the car when nearly every street in America is covered by cameras and watched over by a team of NFFA surveillance agents. So your best bet is going after that cold hard cash. Or a candy bar. Man's gotta eat. If you have other questions about the purge, drop a comment and maybe I'll answer in a future video. Check out my purge playlist on the left and remember to subscribe to CZ's World for new horrors every week, ring the death bell for all notifications, and I'll see you in the next purge. Assuming we both survive. If you don't want to get purged, stay home. If you have to go out for essentials, wear a mask. 